Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. This is like, I don't want this to be the never-ending thing, and it just seems to be that way, and I'm getting bogged down with it. But I just put up a second long video. I'll have that, um, I'll make that public purse first, uh, first. <laughs> um, you know, I haven't yet attended to my regular content. Um, but I want to address a comment here. The video that I put up today is something like, um, the, uh, here I can just read the title here. If you really love charging, then you have to, then why have you let him be been mistreated by dodgy and heartfulness? Um, adding a question mark here, I'm glad I read that. The question mark, you can't save it as a part of the file. Um, you know, I have made two auxiliary videos, but I desperately want to move on. I was inspired a little bit by some activity that's going on outside this channel with some dialogue that's um you know on the a video and on facebook and things and so there is some movement but not like anything significant and i don't know if what can change or not um but person said i'm very sad to see this decision paul why i delete this is to why i delete the playlist i'm very sad to see this decision i was only halfway through the five hour video and have watched every one no matter how long some multiple times and they've all been making significant points this channel just got monetized so I understand deleting relatively so I don't understand deleting relatively new content also my mother and all her old lady church friends really dislike the Pope but they're going to stop being Catholics but they're not going to stop being Catholics Dodgy isn't the practice to me God and pockets are the practice peace Paul so this isn't really necessarily a critical comment. Um, I read it, you know, differently. You know, I scanned it first, but I want to address this anyway. Um, I didn't really have a choice. I mean, the one critical thing the guy wrote here is um, also my mother and all her lady, old lady church friends really dislike the Pope, or they're not going to stop being Catholics. Well, that's not at all relevant to the, you know, this is um, completely different. Like, because the Catholic Church is corrupt. And, you know, whether they like the Pope or not, the whole thing's corrupt. It doesn't matter. It's just something they cling to. It's exactly the problem, because the people doing Taj Mark are not supposed to be religious. They're not supposed to be religious followers. They're supposed to be dynamic, spiritual people. And lions, right? Who are not just, you know, shuffled into the herd of an organization. Religion is for sheeple. That's why they call them sheep. They're literally called sheep. You know, in in the in Christian tradition, if you go to a Christian church, Catholic church, you're referred to as a sheep. You're being shepherded by Jesus and God. I mean, that's your part of your definition. You know, one is that you're a sinner. The other is that you're sheep. You're a sinner and you're sheep. That's who you are. That's what you're submitting to in terms of a narrative. You know, I should say this in um a you know one of my regular videos, but that's the narrative that's um given to you. Um, you know, you know, I'll include this audio at the end of my next video on Pockets of the Future, hopefully tomorrow. I'll add that to it. Um, so, you know, that's not the same thing. This is people who got lucky enough to get into a spiritual organi organization where it was dynamic and it was alive, and they're allowing it to be turned into a religion. So they're the worst of the worst. They can't be compared to your grandmother or your mother and her friends. They're not like that at all. That's not who, you know, these people are. They're supposed to be people who are keeping the, you know, the essence of the thing alive. And Dodgy is wrecking the system. And so that future generations won't have access to it. So it, not only should they leave, but there should be some resistance. And I talk about this in other videos. But going back to my decision, it wasn't a decision at all. And I'm not going to tell you why, because I really can't. It was the only thing I could do. No, the money, I'm not making any money off these videos. Like, I think I mo made, I can look at it now. Um, you know, I haven't even looked at it, but in terms of this channel, I just, it, I made $42 total, and one day made $20, and the rest were under $8. One, one day was $3.84, $2.32, eight dollars and twenty five cents, twenty dollars and eight cents, and six dollars and fifteen. And 
you know, that's, it's just not, that's not money, right? Like that's, I mean, it takes me hours to make these videos and I'm not getting compensated for them. I got accused of making money out of slamming dodgy by some, you know, Irish woman who used to sort of be, you know, I was friendly with whatever, you know, that I kind of knew. I mean, it's not somebody who I thought a lot about. She's a struggling person, you know, a person struggling through abuse. She was abused by a priest, so there's a tie in here. Um, you know, not laughing at that happening, but just the fact that this Catholic church was mentioned, but this woman was abused by a priest, wrote a book at it about it, and she's a struggling person. And we had, you know, she wrote and reached out to me, one of the few people didn't like my ex-wife, and, you know, she said some things that were kind of supportive, really didn't know what's going on. Maybe I'd even watched some videos on my channel, and I sent people to these people. There's a lot of Irish people that have come to the Sajmar, you know, heartfulness thing through me, and I knew about five or six of them. A couple of them I met in India, and the rest I knew through, um, you know, like through Facebook. And I think they mostly live in Galway, but there's other people there. Anyways, there's an Irish connection, you know, my mom's Irish. Uh, but anyways, there was that. And so she accused me of trying to make money, and that's not the, what's happening here. And people haven't told me whether there's ads on the sitting videos or not. I've made great content and had to delete it because of YouTube's ever-changing policies and I've navigated YouTube as well as any other truther, if not better. And I've kept my channel going, I've kept my stuff going here because I'm willing to delete videos and not cover things that I want to talk about. There are things I want to talk about that I can't. And that's really frustrating for a person like me, you know, someone who just you know, stuff's there in front of me. That's why, you know, I ask people not to send me things that they know are going to violate community guidelines because I'm going to be tempted to share them. And so I don't need to know about them or think about them because if I know or think about them, I feel like it's my obligation. And I, you know, even even more than that, I, I like to talk about things that, you know, I feel something about. And so I've had to restrain that part of myself and I've had to delete videos that I don't want to delete. You know, no one likes to delete their work. I mean, these are, this is work that I've done. And I know people want to watch them as well. So there's, you know, but I've had to do that over the years just for YouTube. And it's, you know, I mean, I've learned this from Chargy. There's like, a, and even from gardening, like if you're gardening, sometimes you got to pull out, um, like there'll be two plants next to each other and you got to choose one. And you got to kill the other. You got to you remove the other one. It's a couple of sprouts, something. There's just not enough, you know, room. And I mean, you just have to be, you know, uh, you have to make decisions like that. You have to call things or whatever it is. Like you have to make decisions. Sometimes, for your farm to proliferate, you have to make decisions on erasing things, calling things, getting rid of things, and in your life as well, things that you like, things you're attached to, sentimental value. You know, I put a lot of effort into these videos, but you know, there's lots of reasons for it there might be a chance i put it up for members it's really not the intended audience this was for abiasis this wasn't for the people who watch the journey series it wasn't for gratefulness people and for the most part you all didn't comment i don't know if this person commented to any of the other videos but i wasn't you know getting in terms of support for the videos from my normal audience there was almost done maybe one or two comments here or there um so you know i was putting hours into this and then I got all this pushback from you know these heartfulness cronies and only two people had the you know there might have been a lot of lurkers and you know don't be a lurker right you know like I mean even if that was the case though the choice was already made it was made for me it was what I had to do and I you know I want to get into the explanation but if you heard the you know the situation in full you would say oh of course you had to delete your videos and I talked about it with my wife and, you know, there wasn't a decision to be made. It was just what had to happen. You know, I was at peace with it, but I made these videos for Abiyasis who are still connected to Heartfulness and Dodgy. It wasn't made for the rest of the people. There was an intended audience because I, I could have said all these things and I have said all these things. Almost everything I shared I've talked about in the Journey series. There might be some new stuff here, but it's, you know, limited. Uh, but it was intended for people who are, you know, a part of the dodgy heartfulness cult and people who have questions and doubts and there are people and they, they needed this and I was asked to do this 
by the dodgy truth, or I mean, people wanted me to do this for some time because I'm good at it, and they, they don't have the ability and the platform to do it. And so I did it, but the feedback was not great. You know, now I'm seeing that there has been some kind of movement here. A couple of people came forward. One, one person wrote multiple comments, and she's commenting on this Sajmark channel, which I, you know, I read some of these comments there in my last video. And then I get, I've been getting message from a person who's, you know, um, has suffered and, and really, you know, I mean, has been, I want to say, a part of a group of people that has been abused or taken advantage of or knows of people who have been scammed out of lots of money and in, in, in their real estate investments and, you know, there's stuff going on. But none of those people are my problem, which I, you know, if you really listen to the video, I mean, they weren't there for me, like when I needed them. And, you know, I mean, this isn't that kind of thing, but it is that kind of thing, right? Like when I was in desperate situation, my daughter was cutting herself and I went to that gathering and, um, you know, I was ostracized and I left the gathering drained even more than before. And, you know, my family was worse off after we left the gathering with Dodgy. I should have known right down that right then he was a piece of crap and all the people that were following him that ostracized me, you know, not because they did it to me, because they do it to anybody. And my family needed them and I needed them. I needed my community and they weren't there. And so, you know, I, I, that's, that was it for me. Like I, you know, everything I do from there, from this point on, isn't out of, uh, is a sentence of obligation or duty to the master, to the divine master or whatever. Um, but it is an obligation to, um, these, my so-called brothers and sisters, like the organization did a lot of things for me. And, you know, there's things that I, I'm always going to be grateful for. And the organization is really, you know, representative of the third master of the system. But the way I was treated and, you know, not, to be, not just because it was me, but also when new people started to come, I asked for help. You know, new people through me, I asked for help to help them integrate into heartfulness. And thank God they didn't provide the help. I mean, they made decisions that made it easier for us to all understand that it sucks. And so, um, you know, there's that. But in terms of deleting the videos, like like I just had to do it, like I've done in the past, you know, and I it was made easier for me by all the things I just said, you know, I was just kind of over it, and I had to move on to, you know, I have to make money, and I'm not making money here at the heart doing you know gratefulness meditation videos. Over a six day period, it averaged out at six dollars, but the twenty dollar that was the big day was an anomaly because I released four videos on that day and one of the videos kind of went viral in India which would be you know lesser amount of money because they pay lesser advertising prices there and that was the big day of twenty dollars right and so if you remo remove that it's like four dollars and fifty cents a day right that's you know for hours and hours worth of work and all these things and then just all the you know the hostility all the things that come with it and so it was a thankless job, right? It's something that I did out of, you know, a sense of duty. But And I think there was a reason before, before it because there has been a movement for a few people got value out of it. I mean, people who have changed their trajectory and people who are on the fence and, you know, now are people who needed support and they, they received it and maybe some lurking people that, you know, didn't have the, the generosity and the, you know, whatever to come out and thank me for doing it, right? Which, again... I mean, I don't do it for external validation, but but in this case, you know, they should have been more supportive. They should be verbally supportive. Like they should come out of lurker, coming out of their lurker status. And maybe there isn't any other people. Maybe there's no other people that are lurking that benefited. But at the end of the day, um, you know, and I should say this about the Christian tradition. Well, at the end of the day, let me finish this thought. There was, you know, it was out of my hands. It just had to be done. And everyone should accept it that, you know, I'm good at keeping, you know, this thing going, what I've done here. And, you know, it's taken a lot of effort on my part and a lot of, you know, I mean, being able to delete things that are, you know, things that I put a lot of effort and energy into just because there was really no other choice. But I was going to say this thing also, I'll, I'll just make these points separately tomorrow in my other video. It's just a realization I had. And then I had another one just now. And so in the Christian tradition, you're referred to as a sinner and as a sheep. That's how you're being defined. A practitioner, a parishioner in, the, in these traditions, 
you're either a sinner or a sheep. So in the Old Testament, sheep get sacrificed, right? I mean, it happens, you know, there's a ram there that, um, you know, rams a male sheep. And sheep get sacrificed more than once, but there's the story of, um, is it Isaac, it's Isaac and Abraham. And Abraham's ordered by God to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. And then God said, just kidding. I just was testing you. Ha ha. Here, and he, there's a ram that appears and he said, sacrifice your ram. Like a ram wanders up and he, and he makes him kill the ram, which is a sheep, which is what people are referred to there. So, you know, like think you can think about that. So that's, you know, that's what, I mean, it's completely different than what we're talking about here in Sajmar, where you're supposed to be a lion. And there's a lack of people being a lion and that's just, you know, there's nothing you can do with it, right? So I did what I, you know, felt like I had to do. The videos are still there, and at some point I might put them up in a different platform, and, you know, we'll see. Um, and there's a reason for all of that. So, you know, it's now it's uploading all those videos and, I mean, things like that. So we'll see if there's a need of, of the, you know, something later on. But as for now, I made the right decision. I mean, it was the only decision to make. And so, like, people should just accept that. Like, I know what I'm doing here. And, you know whatever okay so i wanted to add something to this um it's a good opportunity another realization so if you go to the sajmarg um website you can search for lology and lions or babaji and lions this is a talk given to you by master charji the experience of sajmarg and he says um i don't know if these means serve to put more enthusiasm into you whether you come in bleeding sheep and going out as roaring lions if you come in as bleeding sheep and go out even and, and, and you, even with the bleat taken out of you, and he chuckles. Uh, but then there's this one. So I recommend to you all to create Cultivate Hearts of a Lion. There's a book called Heart of a Lion, which is a series of talks that Chargy gave in Africa. That is what Babaji said. I want lions and not sheep. Sheep are always looking down, munching on grass. The lions roar in defiance, goes where nothing else can go. And so it's often said that in Sajmarg that they wanted lions and not sheep. And Lalaji himself said, the first master said, I want lions, but I permit sheep to be here just out of etiquette. And again, I'm not getting the quote exactly right. I couldn't find the exact quote. But what he was saying there is, you know, it would be rude to kick sheep out, but they don't want sheep. And if you could turn into a lion from being a sheep then great but you know that they're not looking for sheep they're looking for lions and that's clearly something that's here in the Sajmark system um, and Chargy is born in the month of Leo and was often referred to as a lion and he just had that sort of Leo presence he was kingly and he's a big guy and he had a gruff voice and so you would definitely describe him as a lion now, Daji wants sheep, and there's no doubt about it. Kamlish wants sheep. Kamlish himself isn't a lion. I wouldn't call Kamlish a lion. Maybe a jackal or something, I don't know. But he does definitely doesn't want lions. He doesn't want people that question him. He doesn't want people who can think for themselves. I mean, he wants people just adhere to the fact that he's given this title of master, and or not master, but president of the system, and because of that he's you know he's above reproach and he wants mindless sheep and they've encouraged sheep like behaviors and they are you know looking at people to put away their critical thinking skills and not see that he is doing things that all the other masters said don't do and he's not doing things that the master said to do and he's removing like the lions like the babaji and and Chargy's birthday, and he's trying to diminish Chargy's presence and roll all these things, and it's undeniable. So he wants sheep, and that's what's happening in this system, where it's going from where they used to want lions to where they want it, where they want sheep. Now Chargy once said, "You know, I'm training my young lions." His son was one of them. Some of these other guys, and they were, you know, doing good work. I mean, guys I had respect for, and I was grateful for the work they were doing. But they haven't taken a stand against what uh, Daji's doing. Even uh, Chargy's son was there at the birthday gathering and endorsing Daji once again. 
And so, you know, how can you call any of those people lions, right? A lions would sit around and watch this happen. And, you know, it's the, it's the religification of this spiritual system. And it's a real tragedy, you know. So I just thought I'd add that here. I mean, it's a part of the whole thing. But it's obvious to people. And there's one more piece to this. Um, you know, there are... Uh, the, guy, the guy, the dodgy truther, told me a while back that there were people who were in the inner circle and they saw Dodgy and a bunch of people basically force Chargy. You know, Chargy was running out of time. He had three years before he was going to die when he nominated Dodgy and Kamlish in 2011, in October. So he was going to die in... Um, December of 2014. So he, you know, didn't he? He had basically three years, three years and a couple months. And you know, he was he had poor health throughout that time, like he wasn't, you know, at his best. And so he was limited in what he could do and how he could do it. And he had written down Kamish's name based on what Kamish said, and decided against him, and went in another direction. And Kamish laments, well, what if he had just followed through with that initial thought? Well, there's a reason why he rejected Kamish in the first place, which we now see, right? And so there are guys who know the details of what happened because they were there. But the dodgy truther knows what it is but won't tell me because he knows I'll share it. And these guys don't want it known in the public because people will know who they are if the story gets out. There's more to the story than I know. You know, just basically the general the general generic version is these people around Chargy all pressured him to pick somebody or specifically Kamlish. But, you know, you know, Dodgy. But I don't have all the details. And these guys won't stand up. They witnessed it for a reason. And, you know, of course this is this is not lion like behavior. If you are uh if you have information that would delegitimize de Kamlish as a master, the charge he was pressured into this, then a lot of people who are on the fence would say, oh yeah, that makes total sense. Now, you know, the whole thing that Dodgy has going for him is that he, um, you know, he was endorsed by Chargy. But if there's another story out there and there's people who witnessed, you know, pressure being applied and you know, Chargy was breaking down physically and he had so little time and he needed to appoint somebody just to keep the mission going. I mean, leaving no master would have been probably worse than what we see now. I mean, as bad as this is. And so, um, you know, there's all of that, right? So these people won't come out and tell their story because they don't want to be known. These are old men, like, you know, guys who are probably in their 70s now. They're going to die and maybe, you know, this guy will tell the story then. But it'll be a little you know it'll be too little too late but a lot of people you know if they could get over the fact that Chargy appointed him if they heard from inside people of course you know there'd be some questioning of the credibility of the story but still if people knew that there was this other story and the story went around the mission it would definitely undermine Dodgy's one you know his strength which is he was you know supported by both Babaji and the Whispers messages and Chargy and you know real life and so that's a hard hump to get over. But any kind of any kind of information that would undermine that, you know, that shield that he hides behind would certainly, you know, allow people to see him for what he is. But again, the mission's full of sheep. They, there's this idea they want lions, but I don't see any lions anywhere, right? You know, like, there's just no lions. And that's a part of this thing. So, like, it's, I mean, they're all worthless sheep. The Lology didn't want sheep at all. Like, he would allow shit, he, sheep. He would say, you know, I permit sheep to be here. That's what he said. I permit sheep to be here based in etiquette. Meaning he didn't want to be rude to sheep, but didn't want them. Like, you know, it's some person that you you don't want to tell the person a piece of crap and get out of your house. So it's an uninvited guest that, you know, you don't really want there, but you, you know, just to be civil, you allowed him to be there. But that's how you, you know, these felt about these people. They're not your desired demographic. Anyways, I just thought I'd add that to the whole thing here. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paravano, definitely reporting from the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.